Okay, it looks like we have Merlin today. Um, does he need a muzzle? Don't worry, I, I got him. I got him. Uh, you're okay. I got him. He, I don't know. He looks, I mean, we'll take it slow, but um, he looks like he's a teddy. This is gonna be fun. Hi. So it looks like Fluffy has what's called Cushing's disease or hyperadrenal corticalism. Um, it's a pretty complicated disease, and there's a lot of testing and medication that go with it. Uh, we'll start with um, a blood test, and that will take It'll take him all day to do. He'll come here, he'll be here for eight hours. We do a four hour blood draw and an eight hour blood draw post injection of dexamethasone. Um, it's just a huge complicated process. And so I'll just explain it all to you really quick, okay? So what happens is you have your brain and then there's this little pituitary gland here and it's segmented and it sends signals down to, to your kidney has these cute little adrenal glands here. And it sends signals, and then the adrenal glands send signals back up and inhibit or not. Um, and so if the problem is here, then we do certain drugs. And the problem is here, then we do other certain things. And in the end, you've got this huge thing called And it's really complicated, and these are the prices. We can do um, the testing, and then we'll do the treatment, Oops. and then we'll have to retest. So that'll be two weeks after we start the treatment. And then once we get the retest, that's a four hour test, or two hours, sorry. And then this one is an eight hour. And then we'll do the, we'll alter the treatment, whether or not it works, uh, and then we'll retest. And then hopefully by then you've got your pituitary organ with your kidneys and all the signals are crossed and like that. And see it. Uh huh. Okay. It's a pretty simple process. Okay. Okay. Do you think if I called my wife, you could explain all that? I, she's the one that takes care of this. I'm. She just told me to bring in the dog. Here, I, I got my phone. I can call her right, right now and put it on speakerphone. Is that okay? Oh, um, yeah, I guess. I can do all that explaining again. Yeah, um, sure. You want to call her and put her on speaker then? Okay. Okay, it looks like we... So, what brings you in with Fluffy today? This is Fluffy. Um, Flu Fluffy's been limping a little bit, been having a little bit of a hard time getting around. Um, so she's she's limping and having a hard time getting around the house. Um, well, we, we can definitely consider some pain medication for her, um, but I think the first thing we can do that's going to help her a ton is to get rid of some of her excessive weight. You think she's fat? She's not, she's not fat. She's big bone. She, she's a good size. Come on. She's not fat. Um, I mean, kind of. She's kind of a little, little overweight there. Um, she might be a little overweight, but she is a Maine Coon. I mean, it's, she's supposed to be big. Oh, Maine Coon, huh? Pure Maine Coon. Okay. Um, her stature is a little, little small for a Maine Coon, so we can start limiting her food a little bit. You want me to cut back on the food? I mean, 
She's here for one thing. It seems like she needs some pain management. Mm -hmm. um, so you want her to be, you want to be able to feel the ribs, like on the back of your hand, but hers is more like, um, you know, your, um, um, like your thigh. Hi, I'm Dr. Thomas. I'm here to see Fluffy. Hi, yeah, so, um, so I found Fluffy, I just noticed this morning that she wasn't feeling very well, and I thought I should maybe bring her in. Um, she's just not doing as well. I swear yesterday she was running all over the house. Um, but today, um, she's just not herself. She's a little thin, um, a little floppy maybe. So she's been, you, you found her like this? This has been going on just yesterday. Okay. Okay, right. we need to take her back. We need to go ahead and hand her to me. We need to take her back, start, start some fluids, blood work. Here, I need to get, I need to take her back now. Uh, oh, oh, you, you need her right now? You think she's, you think she's really sick? Uh, oh, yeah, you know, oh gosh, my cat. You know what? Um, my neighbor's cat was just sick. Do you think there's something going around the neighborhood? But then, but wait, no, no, that wasn't my neighbor. I'm sorry. That was, um, an aunt. Okay. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, all right, hand, hand, come. Figures back. Anyway, uh, I had I had another cat named um, Duffy, and that one got sick. Yeah, I, oh, no. Can I take her back? We need to hurry, come on. But hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, Duffy got really sick. Um, do you think it's his kidneys? Um, but yeah, I think he had, I think he had diabetes. Yeah, I think, because I had to give him shots every month or something, um, but he was, he was the best cat. He would just sit on my lap and, and... I need to take her back. And I would just pet it and it would just lick my fingers when I ate cheese puffs. Um, it was just the best cat, but Fluffy's not doing too well. Um, I know, I'm really worried about her right now. Right now? Come Okay. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, all right, hand, hand, come. Can I take her back? Um, yeah, I, I got her when she was a tiny kitten. I found her on the side of the road. She was just wandering down the road in her cute little kitten self. Uh, and I picked her up, and she's been with me ever since, and I'm so worried about her. Okay. Okay, all right, all right. guys, so I'm Dr. Emily with uh, This Little Light, and I hope you enjoyed our little skit making. Um, I just wanted to have some fun with some of the clients we see sometimes and maybe give you a little information on how you can help us the next time um, you're in the clinic. The first thing, the, the first scene you saw was with aggressive dogs. Um, a lot of dogs that are perfectly wonderful animals at home that would never hurt a fly, they get really scared when they get to the vets. And they can sometimes, in fear, get aggressive. Uh, it's not, we're not trying to offend you, we're not trying anything, we just need to stay safe. I mean, we don't all need to just end up with a bunch of band-aids on our hands and missing chunks of our arm um, because, you know, you thought your dog was well behaved. So if we feel like we're reading some signals and we feel like that your dog might need a muzzle or might need to come out of the room so that someone else can handle it, um, don't be offended. We're just trying to keep ourselves safe. Uh, we deal with this all day, every day. We know how to read a dog and we just don't want to take our chances. Um, so moving on to the scenario number two, uh, know your history. If you're I understand that not everybody can bring their own pet to the hospital or to the vet, but if you do have someone else bring your pet, 
just make sure that they're informed. Is the animal eating? Is it drinking? Is it having vomiting or diarrhea? Is it coughing? Has it been limping? Which leg is it? Um, anything that you can get the person who's bringing the animal to know is going to help us a ton figuring out what's going on. Um, the other thing is try to pay attention when we're explaining to you what's going on. And if you know that you're not going to be the one to take all this information in, then stop us before we go into a 30 minute long spiel about what the disease is and how we're going to treat it and tell us that you're not the one to tell. It's no big deal. Uh, we just, we don't want to waste our, not waste, that's not the right word, I'm sorry. We don't want to spend all our time talking to you about this disease process and then have to repeat ourselves over again. So just, you know, know your history and then when you're here with us and we're talking to you, just try to pay attention to what we're telling you. Um, number three scenarios, pretty obvious. Try to respect our time. We're running around like crazy trying to get everybody fit in and everybody um, seen within the right amount of time. Sometimes we get backed up with emergencies. But if we walk in on you and you're on your phone, that's fine. Um, but if you could, you know, tell the person that the doctor's here now and I need to get off the phone, that would be very preferred to you telling us that we have to wait for you to get off the phone because now we're making everyone else behind you late as well. Um, the number four scenario is overweight pets. A lot of people are very offended and don't think that their pets are overweight, but unfortunately, Obesity in our pet population is extremely common and causes so many problems. I mean, a cat that, or a cat or a dog that is severely overweight or obese is going to have a hard time getting around. They're going to have worse arthritis. Um, whatever pain they're having, now they have to carry another 10, 20 pounds on those painful joints. Um, and it's really easy to get overweight pets. Just monitor their weight. Um, in theory, they're supposed to, their ribs are supposed to feel like the bones on the back of your hand so you can feel them. And you, can, you shouldn't be able to see them, but you can feel them. You don't want them, obviously, to feel too skinny like your fingers. And you don't want them to feel too thick like your wrist. Um, so that's the way to kind of tell if your pet is in the right condition. Just because your, your animal is... A larger breed dog or even if their dad was supposedly 175 pounds doesn't mean that your dog should be every dog is different uh, we need to keep them all in the right weight category to keep them a little healthier and then lastly in the fifth scenario um, especially in this type of situation where there's some sort of emergency the animal's super sick and we need to get to them right away need to get them hydrated need to figure out what's wrong with them in order to save their life we just need to know pertinent history. We need to know when this started, um, what we might think it might be, could they have gotten in anything, toxins, trash, anything else. Uh, we don't need to know about your 90 cats you've had before this one and each of their personalities. Um, we need to start working on this one right away and really try to just give us the history to deal with this particular patient and what we need to know about it so that we can do our jobs um, get your animal treated properly and quickly. And again, we still have a line of people behind you to treat. So we got to get to them too. So I hope you enjoyed it. I didn't, I hope I didn't, I didn't mean to, um, make fun of anyone or offend anyone, but, uh, I'm just trying to give you tips on how to make our jobs a little bit better, um, and be able to do our jobs better and be more efficient and serve you better, really. Uh, so, um, that was it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll do another one again. Y'all have a good night.